Or in the f no? So you want to hear that part? Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tony, take it away. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, take this fat off. Okay, we're going to take the billy, cut this billy off this lamb. So, Tony, this is uh, belly now you're going to take off. What are we going to do with that? Uh, you can use it for stew, if you want. Yeah. Well, you're the chef. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> so the belly parts, well, all parts of the lamb as we take them off, we're going to talk about what we can do with them. So these belly parts, as Tony said, these are great for um, stew. Okay? So you, too close to that mic. Okay. These are great for stew. You can use them. Uh, just cut them up and dice them up and braise them nice and slow because they're kind of tough cuts of meat. So you want to uh, stew that you know, nice and slowly over a long period of time. You can use it for that. So this is what it looks like. Now something else you can do with this uh, stew, I'm going to show you right now. Is, uh, want to give me one for a second? You can take it. I don't know if you can see this. You see that? Yeah. Lamb's in, I think the lamb's in the way. I think you see it in the mirror. Oh, okay. So you take it and you roll it. Like this. And you can curve it. And it looks like that. Nice to put it in the frying pan and sear it like this. So Tony just rolled them up so they're little like randos and then you can just sear those off in your pan. You can wrap them in. You can wrap them in bacon also. Here you go. So again, because they're kind of uh, lean, dry cuts, you wrap them in bacon or added fat. Some of the fat even that we just removed from the lamb itself, and wrap it in the fat, sear those. Okay. Right, there you go. You can sear those in a pan and then just lay them in the oven and slowly roast them. So they're nice little, right, little flavorful things. And before we rolled it, like I said, it was out like this. You could line this with some seasoning before you roll it up. You could lay some ham in there or you know, even some more bacon. You might probably cook a little bit before you lay it in there and roll it up, line with some cheese maybe, whatever you want. And you got nice little roll-ups. Yep. Okay, next we're going to remove the, uh, the legs. This is a little bit difficult. This is where the sock comes in. Want to give me a hand? Yep. Okay. One second. So you got to get right through the bone here. Okay. There we go. Okay. The two legs. And we're going to split those. Use this eye, Tony. <laughs> okay. So there's the legs. Now normally what I do with these, I remove the tail. So I just cut down the side here. And remove that, use that for stew, whatever. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove that shank. All right. And what do you do with the shank? Well, before we get into the shank, let's talk about the, the whole okay. leg itself, actually, if you want. Go ahead. For the leg, if you want to do something with this, you know this is nice, slow roasted in the oven, but a great way to do it is take your garlic and slice it really thin, and then just pierce some holes right in the leg like that. All the way through, and then just slide little slivers of garlic in there. Right, and just as many holes as you want, and nice slow roast that, and that garlic's going to seep out into all the meat around it. And that, uh, you know, just slowly roast that for, you know, about an hour, hour and a half, and 350. It'll be delicious at the end of it. Okay. As Tony said, when he removed the, some of the, these bones, we're going to save all that, because we can roast those in the oven and then make a little stock out of that, roast them, throw them in a pot with some water and some carrots and onions, and we're going to uh, make the stock, and you can make some a really flavorful stew. So next we're going to remove the, the shank. There's a knuckle right here. So we're going to cut around that.
So this is the shank. This is what we call the shank. So you get four of these off this animal. And again, uh, the shank tends to be a little bit tougher, right? So it's nicely braised, slow roasted for that cut of meat. Um, so stick around afterwards, actually, uh, when we're done the demo, we've got some samples. We, we uh, slow roasted some of the shoulders and uh, with some, again, with some garlic and okay. herbs. And you can have a little sampling of what this animal will taste like. Okay, next we're going to debone this, this leg. We're going to remove the pelvic bone. Just get the tip of your knife in there. Follow the bone. So Tony, if somebody wanted a boneless leg of lamb, yes. they be able to get one of those down to Coleman's? Definitely. Definitely, there you go. Yeah. So. We do all kinds of cuts. Anybody looks for anything different, we do it for them. Okay, there's a pelvic bone. Now we're gonna so remove. again, we're gonna use that bone. We'll save all those bones and make our stock out of that. Next, we're gonna remove the inner bone. Just follow the bone, run the knuckle. So here's your bonus leg. Nice. Put a bit of string onto it, tie it up, bacon over it. Right. Okay. The same idea. So we talked about the leg a minute ago and roasting it. What a great way to do it. You get them boneless like this down at Coleman's and you can um, season all the inside and the outside, close it up and tie it with some butcher twine. I imagine Tony can do that for you if you'd like. And then slow roast that. No bones, slice nice and thin. Beautiful. Okay. Next we're going to remove the Liver hurt. Actually, it's not hurt. So again, all these the organs in this inside, they make great, um, the great dishes. Stuffed heart, stuffed lamb heart is phenomenal. You're into that. Kidneys and the kidneys. Again, looking back at the, uh, the belly part, the stew part, you take some of that, dice that up with some kidneys. You ever, you know, like steak and kidney pie? We'll do it with lamb instead. You know, it's really, really great. Braise that in a little bit of Guinness. Yes. God, yeah. Tony. I know I'm not going to have a feed later tonight. Liver. And the liver. Again, liver is great. Same as you'd buy, you know, uh, a cow liver and slice it and pan fry it like you would. Yeah. Lamb liver, you do the exact same thing. Just Toss in a bit of flour in a nice hot pan with some oil and butter and sear that off. A few caramelized onions. What do mm -hmm. you think? Good. Good? Sounds good. Okay, next we're going to remove the shoulder. There's a seam. Just follow the seam down through. So Tony, how many lambs would you say you've butchered in your lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> One or two? Oh, a couple. This is the first one? This, this is not my first one. No, okay. Just checking. Actually, uh, at the store at Coleman's, we would normally saw this with the bandsaw, and uh, we would get shoulder chops out of it and uh, loin chops. But uh, there's a restaurant that lo is looking for this rack, so we're going to leave the rack intact for them. There's your shoulder. Nice piece of meat. So that's the shoulder again, and then again with the shank up here that you could remove that and you have more shanks. Uh, this is the, the piece that I actually have roasted upstairs that we're going to bring down for you guys a sample. Uh, just rub this with some rosemary and diced, gar uh, diced garlic and rosemary. Uh, some olive oil went over that and just in a slow oven about 325 for the past hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. 
So you want to see what that tastes like when it comes out. We didn't really over season it because I wanted you to make sure you could get flavor of what the lamb actually tastes like itself versus you know hiding with a bunch of different herbs and spices. But it's, uh, you'll see when it comes down in a few minutes. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. There's a membrane here. You just follow this membrane. No, you can see it or not. Right here. Just follow this membrane down. You can almost, a lamb is so delicate, you can almost tear it off yeah. without even using a knife. So yeah, like Tony said, with the membrane, if you, if you kind of look at the animal and, and as you're going, it's, it kind of tells you where to go, how to cut and where to cut. On the shoulder. Okay, we're going to remove that neck. You want to saw that one? Let me saw. Oops, oh, sorry. sorry. So again, the neck is great for uh, making your stew, using it for your stock. You can braise that and pick that meat off there. It makes great uh, stewed lamb. Okay, now we're going to take the breastbone off. If you've got a good sharp knife, you can cut it right through with, a, with your knife. Yeah, the right tools are a big. Uh, yes, it's a big factor in butchering. Like I said, I'm not going to touch this and leave this alone because there's a restaurant looking for it. So I'm just going to show you that we because we do have some that's all that's um, been already removed, so you can get an idea of, of what it would look like. Okay. That's the one side. So there's where it was taken off. Okay. No, so you can. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This way. Sorry. Is it? No, sorry. <laughs> Run the wrong side. Run the wrong there side. There you go. This is where it was taken off. There you go. So, remove it like that. So that just comes away. You just break away through the bones there like that. And these are nice racks. And this would be like the, for me, this is probably the best cut, right? It is the best cut. You know, the lamb, yes. kind of like yeah. the prime rib of the lamb. Yes, exactly. Right? So prime those are great. T-bone. Yeah. Right? So these are great, just roasted, grilled, pan fried, like whatever you really, that it's gonna be so tender and juicy that you really have very minimal amount of cooking to it. Um, keep it very simple. So if you got this in a restaurant or a rack, you'd, you know, all these bones would be cut down here and the meat would be cleaned off the bones. That would be called a French rack. Yeah. And again, we'd remove all this and you can use all this part for your stew meat, just like we did with the belly uh, cuts earlier. Okay, so we're going to leave this over there. And the breast bone, you can ground this up, you can use it for stew. Let me hang on. I'm just going to split this in two, make it easier for the chef. Now you can also cut down this between the bone if you want, like, like so. And you can also use this for like a rib stew. This is excellent for uh, braising too. Okay. And... We got more chocolate chocolate. Oh, sorry. This is what the cook was talking about. Oh, wow, looks good. So like I said, we just roasted this upstairs. You can see the garlic is just sort of, you know, crisped up a little bit and the rosemary is in there. And that's what it looked like when it came out of the oven just a few minutes ago. And that's it. That's, that's it. how we do it. Throw that in there. Thanks. Thank you.
Fork or something to pick it up with. There's forks there? Spoons. Oh, there you go. That's even better. Alright, so you can come on up and. Oh, wow. Actually, we got to. Uh, 